Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to the Tuesday training. If you can hear me, give me a little sound check in the chat box, I'd really appreciate that. Just let me know that I'm coming in nice and clear. Also, feel free to uh, just say hello and let us know or let me know where you're from. Let me drop this over here. Here we go. Smash some likes. Happy to have you. Let me know you're out there. Yo, yo. Hey, Robin. Hey, Alex. What's up? What's up? Mr. Dan Blackman, what's cooking? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for the sound check. Uh, I'm all set up on my end. <laughs> There's Elon. Uh, yeah, so uh, you get uh, a solo solo training from me, Elon. <laughs> Elon just busted in over there. He's in uh, Masada in Israel, about to watch a late night show, sending you some love. So, hope you're having fun, buddy. Enjoy. Uh, yeah, so it's just uh, just me today. Elon's still in Israel with his family. I actually wanted uh, my wife here today with us to talk about some relational stuff and energetic healing. She's a practitioner in her own right, very, very profound healer. Uh, and unfortunately, she's uh, pregnant with a headache, so we're going to give her a break. She's been dealing with a lot of uh, physical stuff during her first trimester. Um, having said that, if you are brand new to our community, and uh, I'd love to specifically say hi to you as well. So uh, let me know that you're first time here. And uh, yeah, if uh, you're brand new to our community, welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers. My name is Guy Ferdman. Uh, usually we're a duo with my brother Elon. And uh, our community, our company, uh, ourselves are... Uh, have been for the last two decades, so 40 years combined, uh, deeply dedicated to uh, transformational work in our own lives. Um, and we've gone all over the planet to uh, learn from some incredible teachers and invested well over a million dollars in our own education. We, we laugh uh, regularly with our accountant who's always looking at our books and wondering why 20 to 30% of everything we make goes to um, educational things. Um, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Our, our, we are deeply, deeply committed to our personal liberation, deeply committed to our students and clients' uh, personal liberation. And so um, these, these chats every Tuesday is to give you guys a, a taste of some of the uh, philosophical work that we do here. So like more on the mindset, how we think about things, how we approach things in our lives, how we approach things with our clients and courses and stuff like that. And then also give you a, a taster to um, what I think is even more profound and beneficial work, which is how the energetic and awareness aspect of humans plays into our own healing, liberation, and increasing our, our personal and professional performance. And uh, today we're going to be talking about everyone's uh, favorite topic. Uh, no, not sex, but we're pretty close second. We're going to talk about money. Um and really kind of like what's what's the premise behind that so before i go into all that how many of you guys know that uh you want to make more money and maybe that's a silly question because i know the answer up front but how many of you guys know that you're you know looking for for new ways to approach making more money and this is not a uh this is not a network marketing pitch this is not a ground floor opportunity but in, intuitively like you know that there's uh some blockage that you have around your performance with wealth or money and those two things are are separate for me in my mind. Uh, but I'd love to get your feedback. Beautiful. Sonia says yes. Laura says of course. Okay. And if you can be absolutely brutally honest with yourself, what do you believe uh, is either holding you back or if that's too too close to the chest for you? What do you think holds people back um, from acquiring more wealth or making more money. Well, I just take a moment and if you wouldn't mind in the chat box, it's like, 
in a few words, like what do you feel is really stopping people from, from acquiring more wealth? Okay. And while you're thinking about that, um, you know, for a lot of people, it's people aren't, you know, may think like people aren't working hard enough and there may be some validity and truth to that statement. And that's just not my experience. Most people I come across, whether they're entrepreneurial or, you know, whether they work, you know, in a more fixed income type of position, generally speaking, people work pretty hard, especially if you're like an A type growth oriented person, chances are you're, you're a pretty hard worker. And so there's like sentiments in our society that hard work is the only way to make more money. But I kind of want to offer here, there's plenty of people who work hard and are not wealthy. So we want to at least take a look at that and maybe dismantle our beliefs around that the only way to acquire more money or make more money or get more wealth is by strictly working harder. Laura saying less is more mindset, right? So we've all heard these lines of like work smarter, not harder, build systems and things of that nature. Again, especially if you're in the entrepreneurial space, like this is the kind of stuff that you're you're fed on a daily basis. And again, there's some validity and truth to that. But however, I, I want to just offer again, you know, like when we look at it, very wealthy people or maybe wealthy people, you know, in your life, you could just sense that there's a different energy or approach to how they feel about money. Now, you may learn something from them and even acquire ideas about how they think about money. And yet, maybe you still find yourself struggling around money. I know certainly, uh, you know, to give you guys a little insight to, to our background, especially if you're new, is we came, you know, we're, my parents are Russian immigrants that immigrated to Israel. Elon and I are Israel, Israeli immigrants that immigrated to America. We've been here for about 30 years. And, you know, we grew up watching our parents really, really struggle around money, making about $400 a week, um, sharing a bi-level home with another family, which means that there was a, a second floor, but another family lived upstairs. We lived downstairs. And so perhaps you can relate to this. And again, say I in the chat box, if you can, you grew up around perception or a conversation that money was a struggle and that there was something to survive and we had to work really, really hard. And so perhaps you're like us where you learned an incredibly good work ethic and that may have yielded some results, right? Because it's kind of amazing, especially if you're more in America, you may see this as like what happens within a single generation, like to, to have my parents come as poor immigrants and then to have, you know, uh, a company like ours and other organizations that we've uh, helped grow in the past to multiple seven figures. Uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty extraordinary thing to do. And, you know, certainly not just Elon and myself, obviously, right, this has to be on the back of education opportunities and things of that nature. However, like, as as we've worked with more people, uh, certainly some some very wealthy people, we've we've been privileged to uh, coach people who are nearly billionaires. And here's what I can tell you from having talked to lots of very wealthy people over the years, is that money in itself intrinsically does not make people happy. It just doesn't. What we have found is for a lot of people when they actually become wealthy, especially rapid wealth, just like rapid awakening, it's actually a very difficult experience. And the reason for that, uh, especially when it comes to wealth, is that when you've played this game, this game of life, at least the way that it's being currently portrayed and what makes people successful and yada, 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 right? We all, we all live around that. When you've checked all those boxes, financially speaking, and you seem to have like taken care of everything and spiritually speaking, you feel no difference, meaning that you don't feel an increased sense of joy, connection, love, utility. Um, you don't feel connected to your work, whatever it might be, right? It's so like money for the sake of making money. And again, you checked all the boxes. You can now buy all the toys that you want. You can uh, take all the vacations. Like that novelty can wear out rather rapidly. So what happens after three months, six months, nine months, a year of being retired, buying everything you ever thought that you wanted, traveling the world for a while, and internally nothing has changed. You don't feel a greater sense of satisfaction or ease in your system. I just want to offer that's a very, very scary moment for a lot of people. And again, we've typically found people after they've gone through that transition who are like looking for something deeper. Hey, Georgia, um, you know, who are typically in that transition and going like, well, what else is there? I've, I've won the game that they told me I needed to win and I feel 
terrible. I feel empty. I feel like, you know, soulless or something like that. Uh, and I can, I can tell you it's a scary thing. And so for a lot of us who have been struggling with money, you know, most of our lives, there's this um, fear and I'm going to point at it and it's, it's, it becomes a mental exercise, right? There's like stories around that. But what I want to point out is the way that it feels internally in your body. There is a, a nervous system response that's happening. That's, that's a survival mechanism. And that most people who are, who are um, in the business world and they're trying to make a lot of money, what they're trying to do is alleviate that stress inside of their nervous system. You know, say I, if you agree with that, there's like this feeling you, you have inside, right? And so then there's all the, the stories that are attached to that. We'll talk about the dynamics of how this works and then like some things that we can do to, to bring ease to this part of ourselves. And I'm going to point at it again is like when we bring ease to this part of ourselves, we can open up, we can open up our system and actually receive a lot more. And that's really what we want to talk about is that that money ultimately and I don't know if you've thought about it this way before or have had this experience has a lot more to do with your ability to receive. Okay. Because money is this is a supportive energy, but it can, there's only so much that can flow to you in opportunity when our energetic system is closed. And for most people, we're actually walking around with closed systems. There's very, very little energy that's moving. It's rather stagnant and energy is the money of support. And so if we want to receive more support in our lives, what do you guys think we need to do? We got to open up our system. We got to be able to receive more support. And so it's very, very difficult to receive support when our system is perpetually living in a fight or flight response, when our nervous system is, is in a state of worry and chaos internally. Like on the outside, you may have very strong willpower and you know how to walk around and make it look like you're totally fine. You know, and your friends will then ask you, like, how are you doing? And you're like, I'm fine. And they're like, how are you really doing? And like right underneath that fine is like all this pain that I don't think it's a stretch to say that most of humanity is walking around with. Right? Like we joke around this in like our healing circles. Like you ask somebody, like, how are you doing? And they're like, I'm fine. And they're like, how are you really doing? And they're like, ah. you know, like the, the tears and the pain. It's like, it's all just sitting there. It's very, very thin facade. And again, we've all become very accustomed to showing or portraying ourselves in a particular way, especially in the age of social media, where everybody just kind of seems to post their, you know, best moments. And very few people are sharing like these vulnerable moments. It's like, no, that life can be really fucking challenging. Like that's the reality. It can, there is some stuff that really hits hard. Now, what we want to also recognize is much of it, again, I, I want to say all of it, but I'm afraid I'll turn some of you guys off if I, if I put you in that position, is that like we are self-perpetuating. We are actually reenacting our own trauma from within. And there's a reason this happens. There's a reason the system works, the physics, literally the quantum physics of this works in a particular way because the system is trying to self-heal. And so these are all the things that we want to talk about is when you're stuck in reenactment, another way of saying reenactment is you're like in a loop. So you're watching the same kind of thing happen or different variations of the same thing happen. How many of you guys know when I say that you're reenacting or looping different trauma in your life? Do you know, you know what I mean? Just say I in the chat box there. Okay. And so I'm pointing out a lot of different aspects of this right away. And, but what I really want to focus on is this idea of, of wealth. Again, if you just look at it as purely energetic, right? Like wealth and money is an exchange, right? It's an exchange of energy. So, I, so we're putting value on this exchange, so to speak. And like everything else in your life, whether it's love or health or well-being or money, there is, there's only, there's like a limiter in your system of what your system based on experiences that you've had is open or closing for. And if it's, and if your system is closed then again, receiving love, receiving connection, like all that is just going to be just as limited as it would be around money or wealth. And this is where a lot of people are stuck. And then of course, if it doesn't, if you can't resolve it internally, because none of us have been giving education on how to do that, then it is kind of obvious then to look outside of yourself for solutions, okay? But we are in this very special time in humanity where I think most of us 
or at least certainly if you're engaged in these kind of conversations and this kind of work in your life, you will have recognized that no matter what you do, right, there's an inside world and an outside world. Hopefully you've recognized that. And it seems that by fixing or correcting our circumstances in the outside world that we're going to feel better. But I want you to really test that theory internally for yourself right now. And it's like no matter what you've done, how much does that really change? You know, how much does that really change how this internal world feels? And again, something to kind of bring here into our awareness is that most of the things that we pay for, invest our time into, materially buy, connections we try to get, um, love that we try to fall in love, you know, all that kind of stuff. What you what you really care about, what you really care about is your internal state. How do I feel about it inside? If that's true for you, say I. You know, like if that if you can recognize like I'm investing all this time and all this money, but what I really care about is how I feel inside. If you felt safe and well and received and good on the inside all the time, I would imagine, again, you need to imagine this for yourself, is would it matter to you what your external circumstances look like if you were just walking around peaceful and zen all the time? Would you give a shit about how much money was in the bank or whether that, how that person thought about you or anything else like that, right? There would be a kind of grounded stability within your own systems that then the circumstances that you're facing would they might move something. They might be like, oh, that's interesting. I'm having this experience in my body. But like if you were feeling stable in your system, wouldn't really matter. Okay. And if you kind of want to play with this idea of support and be like, oh, how, how, you know, how would I measure support? Like if you had to put yourself on a scale of one to 10 and honestly say, if you feel like saying it again in the chat box, feel free to do that on a scale of one to 10, how much support with 10 being like, I'm open to support and receiving everything the universe has to offer and provide to one, I'm like completely closed off to support. Like, how would you rank yourself on that one to 10 scale? And again, you may have to be like really honest with yourself and maybe even take a quick pause and be like, you know, what's what, what, what does that really feel like for me? And, you know, a way to kind of test this is when somebody gives you a compliment, you might hear the compliment but I want you to track your own system and be like, does that actually land in my system? Do I actually like have a deep resonant feeling? Do I receive myself the way the person is trying to, to articulate to me how they feel about me? Does that land in? And, you know, for me, for many, many years, I remember I was on a program. Um, I want to say I was 24, 25. So I was about five, six years into my transformational journey. And I remember we were doing some kind of exercise in front of the room. People were sharing all sorts of vulnerable things. And for whatever reason, it had occurred to me at that point in time that, you know, my, my relationship with my, my parents, specifically my mom in this situation, that like we had, like love was present in our home. Okay. I know some homes that's not the case, but like in our home, love, love was present. But I remember thinking, when's the last time I said, I love you to my mom or she said, I love you back to me. And there was like a deep resonant feeling. Like I knew we were saying the words, but I'm like, when was the last time I actually felt the words? And I honestly couldn't think of a time where that was true. And, it, and that thought actually scared me at that time because I thought, when did I become so robotic? Like when did I, when did I become so ice cold that even my, my mom, my caregiver, right? This, this unbelievably important relationship in my life Sorry, that hit a nerve there for me. <laughs> Just want to process that for a second. You know, this unbelievably important relationship in my life, I'm like, it, it just felt so off, so dehumanizing to not be able to receive my mom and the way that she felt about me. I'm just really feeling it now. So... You know, for those, I'm almost 39 years old. So let's say for like those 15 years, for many years, I asked myself that question. I was like, what is that? You know, what is it about humanity that has us believe the worst in ourselves? Like there's this actual conversation we have internally that's like, mm, you got a compliment and maybe it's some variation of this for you. It's like, you know, if you really knew who I was, you would never say that to me. It's like you actually feel 
that if you vulnerably told people who you really were, it's like they wouldn't want to be around you anymore. They would like head for the hills. And in those in those years where I was doing a lot of mindset work and trying to, you know, quote unquote, figure that out, I, I did realize along the way that when you vulnerably share with people challenges, difficulties, uh, impedances, places where you feel weak or um, not living up to potential, whatever it might be, right, in your experience or even trauma or detriment whatever it might be is that people don't want to run away from you they actually come towards you like honey towards bees how many of you guys have ever like shared something really vulnerable and you didn't get you know this like slap in the face you're like kind of surprised at how connected that made you feel to other people and in fact there was a therapeutic aspect to that as well right you're like oh whew. because there's a part of you that's holding on to that like you have to hold on to it yourself Right. Again, this is uh, pointing at support here. It's like, I got to hold on to this myself. Other people, no one can know. They can't support me with this. And so it's like your system is holding on to something. And I want to and I want you to even take it a step further that this level of support is not just at the human to human level. We're talking about support at the human to spirit level. Like literally, you know, whatever your denomination or religion is or, you know, background is with, with this, I, I often say this, I hesitate to use the word God because there's so much weight in it, depending on what you culturally grew up in. And so I, I will interchangeably use the word God with spirit and universe and energy. And to me, that's, it's all interchangeable. But, you know, for me, it's like, if you had that distortion with people, and you want to recognize that your relationship to God is a lot like your relationship to your parents. Because when you were born, your care, your caregivers were this like omnipotent source of nourishment and care and love. And that's where they were supposed to be. And if they weren't that or couldn't show up that way for you, that's like that, that, that contemplation of the child, that perception of the child is I'm unsupported. Love is not present. Nourishment is not here. And then you kind of like translate that into the into the spirit level, it's like, well, God's not spirit. God's not here. God's not supportive of me. Spirit is not supportive of me, right? And so it's like, you kind of go through this life with this like lonely feeling and this despair inside. While from time to time, people do articulate these beautiful things to you. And guess what? Systems closed. Like I said, with my mom, can't even receive that, like that feeling of support and love internally. And that's, it's a painful place to be, like to be, you know, honest. And I think many of us, if not most of us, are experiencing that at some level, right? So here's what we want to look at. You know, how many of you guys, like at the at the level of of the mental level, right? Just by kind of looking at the chat box here, all the yeses and yups and that kind of stuff. Like you get that, you get that framework. Like you 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 know this experience of life. Say I in the chat box, just so I know that you're tracking this, okay? And, and, I, and again, I think it's important that you guys know that everyone's dealing with this, including Elon and myself. And it's an ongoing process of transforming and opening and learning more than anything, not about, hey, there's an end game here that I'm trying to get to. Oh, a guy told me I need to open my system. Let me open my system. Like opening your system can be scary too. It's like, oh, I'm going to let in support now. What if it disappoints me again? What if they don't show up again? That's a, that's a real concern. What if I keep putting my hand out there like I did when I was a kid and it just gets slapped back? People don't show up. I don't know that I can deal with that level of heartbreak. How many of you guys can, can kind of connect with that, right? Like, I, certainly this was a, a real concern for me. Like, again, we grew up as immigrants. It, there wasn't a lot of support, if any at all. My parents didn't know how to ask for help. Elon and I did not learn how to ask for help. So the only model that we had for doing, surviving, succeeding, um, was just working harder. And again, to some degree, this can work, but it's wildly limited because even in business, if you want to think about this, like business is about leverage, okay? I can give an hour of my time. Like this, what we're doing right here is leverage, okay? I can have this conversation one-on-one -on -one with, with an individual and, and perhaps impact their lives around their ideas, ideals, and, and uh, how they think and feel about money based on this conversation we're having. But right now, right, like even now, we have about 30 some out of you watching this. We'll have hundreds more watching this replay later on. That's leverage. It means this hour of time, this one conversation that could have with one person, I'm gonna have with hundreds of people and hopefully make that same impact across the board, right? That's leverage. And so leverage is how do you take an hour of your time and multiply it 50 fold? 
a hundredfold. So they can have the same impact when the same um, with minimal time, right? And so that is how a lot of people scale and grow. But when you can't ask for support, when you're not able to receive support, how are you ever going to learn how to leverage? You won't do it. Like your system will literally not allow you to do that. And so, so okay, so we talked about some of the mental faculties here, okay? I want to get a little bit more into the energetics here because that's honestly, you know, if you've been around us long enough, you know that that's what we care about. And why? Why is that what we care about? Because for a lot of you guys, it's like you've, you've done the mental game for a long time. You're probably pretty successful at it. And here's what I want to just like offer, especially if you're newer to our community. When you have a really strong mental faculty, you understand psychology, you've done the mindset work, you know how to change stories and shift your paradigms. This is really important work, by the way. Very, very important work. Why? Because it, by, by learning those skills, you will stop re-traumatizing yourself. Okay? It doesn't mean you'll stop reenacting them because that reenactment's not coming from your mind. It's actually coming in from your from the energetics of your body. It's actually how energy gets stuck and moves in the body that causes this. It's like a sympathetic response, it's a limbic response. You know, like by the way, as I say sympathetic response or limbic response, how many of you guys know how to control your sympathetic or limbic response in your body? Do you have any idea how to do this whatsoever? And chances are the answer is no. Because it doesn't work that way. It doesn't, it doesn't, we are not able to affect these parts of ourselves from our mind. And if you cannot affect this part of yourself from your mind, then it doesn't matter how much information you throw at your brain and how much psychology you understand and how many times you change the story and how many times you add integrity and clean things up and do all these kind of things. Effectively, your life is going to look like different variations of the same life. The sabotages are going to feel similar. The uh, the relationships are going to have like you know different airs. And Trudy's saying she can do this through through breath work, and that is that is an access point. Absolutely, uh, I love breath work. I think it's a very very valuable tool, and uh, I'm offering here that we can even get much more precise with this work, and not taking anything away from breath work or mindset work. I think include it all. The more tools you have in your tool belt for when you're going through something, especially challenges, the easier it is to be like, okay, I can fall back on this. Because here's the truth. People don't rise to the occasion. They fall back on their training. When you are put into moments of stress, anxiety, overwhelm, fear, worry, your system has a, an auto, autonomic response that it's going to use. And what we want to do is we want to take in our downtime when we're not in freakout mode and life is a little bit more relaxed we want to take and do repetitions on retraining these systems because for me the quality of your life is going to be directly correlated and measured by the quality of these systems if every single time that you find stress in your life or you're overwhelmed or a relationship isn't going well you are like completely thrown off kilter you know you go inside you're using shame and blame on yourself you're arguing with everybody outside of yourself you know, all these kind of patterns that a lot of humans go through, me included for many years, you're, you're wasting valuable resource of your energy and your time. And your life is not very smooth because then you got to go clean stuff up or change your relationship or change your job. These things take a long time and a lot of energy. And maybe there was just something that you could have done to rearticulate the way that your system is going to uh, respond to a situation because most of us are not responding we're very reactive and so would it be valuable to you guys to to know how do we get underneath those systems and retrain them okay and it's really simple i'm going to offer you guys like a few really simple things here these are are things by the way that we teach and enhance greatly in our uh two-day live events in our programs like you know, there, there's a reason that we work with people ongoingly for three months, six months, even up to a year, because we understand like everything else in life, like you can't take on a practice of anything and do it for just two days and think that you're going to be wildly proficient at it, right? The, the, the way you get proficient at things is you let life arise, challenges come, you notice how you're responding from a higher state of consciousness, and then you apply very specific practices so that that particular thing can move and metabolize from your system instead of 
reorganizing and reenacting in your system. And if you do that regularly, then healing is an inevitability. Liberating yourself is an inevitability. An increase in performance uh, personally and professionally is inevitability. Being able to resource yourself and feel other people's systems and that feeling of support is inevitability. If you can do those things, your system is going to open. You are going to receive more support. And it oftentimes will not look like the way that you think. It may not be you working harder at all. And I want to remind you that our mind likes to think in linear ways, sequences, steps, processes. However, life does not match that. Life is very spontaneous. It's emergent, right? And so that's, that's what we want to look at is how do we work with that spontaneity that's arising and have our system respond to it from a grounded place, okay? So let me give you a little bit of a map here. And then we'll talk about like two things that you can uh, you can do right now basically to support you. And again, how some of the things that we do here are organized to support that. Uh, I, and I want you to know at any time while you're listening to this, if you're like, oh, this is very interesting. I would like to learn more about this. Then you definitely want to be uh, talking to our team about how you can participate in some of our more advanced work. So anytime you can just write contact or contact me in the chat box. Um, and I'll give you guys a website if you want to book in for a free 15 minute, uh, discovery call with our team and they can kind of walk you through this process. You can ask them questions about it too. Okay. So here's the important thing to understand is that in my world, in the, my view, after 20 years of working with people, all these amazing masters and, and whatnot is that the mind can only do so much, but the mind is really a reactive machine. And it, it is reacting and its job for the most part is to just try to create safety, okay? It's just to try to create safety for you. So like when you have anxiety or stress, all that is just to say is there's discomfort. If we kind of like generalize it, all that is to say is there's discomfort in, in my inner experience. Science would call that your nervous system, limbic response, uh, sympathetic response, right? So there's discomfort in my system. My mind is experiencing this with me. And then my mind is running some kind of a program in order to try to alleviate this discomfort that's living inside of my system. Okay. And I want you to check in with yourself real quick here. And again, track your own system. It's like the discomforts that you experience. Even now, maybe as we talk about money, there's some discomfort that's arising or about relationships. Maybe, maybe there's some discomfort that you can notice in your system. An important question to always ask yourself is, is this new? Is this feeling that I'm having right now? Is this thought that I'm having right now? Is this new? And if the answer to that is no, which it probably is no, you know, again, given we've coached tens of thousands of people, I have a pretty good sense of, of how people respond to these things. Um, if it's not new, then you can probably think back and keep thinking back and keep thinking back and be like, you know what? I've been doing this most of my life. I've been responding this way, feeling this way, probably since you were a little boy and little or a little girl, because that's where you learned it. And a lot of it came in before you had any advanced language, certainly before you had logic in the mind. Every child is born as a sensitive energetic system. It's the only way that a baby can navigate this world because they don't have language. And so the only thing they have with the caregiver and their understanding of the world is energetic signaling. Okay, there's an energetic signaling that's happening through the field between the caregiver and the parent, between life and the child between energy everywhere so children are very energetically sensitive here's and here's the scoop my people as an adult you are still that sensitive child that's never changed you may have gotten very good at defending or armoring yourself so that you don't feel very much anymore like the the feeling that you might feel these days is numbness and numbness is not an absence of a feeling that is the feeling being numb is the sensation. It's a, it's a very mild one, but that numbness is the sensation. And for some of us, that's where we got to start again. We got to notice the numbness. Okay. And so again, so I want to give you this map. The mind is looking down at this discomfort in the body and it's like, oh shit, red alert. We got to do something. And it runs the program. And this happens by itself. And just, and it's, it's not, nothing that is wrong with this part. In fact, we want to honor that there's this part of you that works so incredibly hard without sleeping, without asking whether it needs to. It doesn't ask for food. It doesn't ask for rest. It's just on high alert all the time trying to take care of business. But here's the rub is that that part responded to some kind of trauma when you were very young. 
right? Like you were two or three years old, something happened and it did the best that it could in that situation to see what worked to try to create safety in that moment. If that worked, then the mind is like, oh, that's good. And it will keep running that program. It doesn't care how you feel about that program. It's just concerned with your survival. And so it will continue to do that. And you've done that over and over and over and over and over again in your life, right? Repetitiously, oftentimes unconsciously in order to try to continue to create safety. And then again, life shows up the same way. And why? Because that thought pattern that we can measure scientifically, that energy pattern and your body, again, that we can measure scientifically is a certain type of frequency. Reality which we often call here an organic hologram, is responding to that frequency output. And so your energy around money and receiving and support has a certain frequency. That frequency, right, is then emulated or mirrored by your reality. And so different circumstances that match that frequency will continue to show up in your life. And then what most people do is they try to change their circumstances, but what's underneath is that frequency output. And that frequency output can only be subjugated to change by going internally. It will never change by changing your circumstances. That's why very wealthy people who are trying to fill that void of try to find that safety and well-being in their system still can't do it by accumulating wealth because internally nothing has actually changed. Their circumstances have changed, but the fear response hasn't. And so they go from one fear response to the next. Right? They go from, oh my God, I'm scared. I don't have enough money. I need to survive and get more to I have so much money and now I'm terrified to lose it because I'm going to go back down to that fear. And so either way, doesn't matter how you slice it, wherever you are on that, fear is what's running the show. The fear hasn't changed. There's this underlying sense of terror. And so even if you're going to go and you know work at building wealth, but what's going to build the wealth is that fear response then the wealth that's built will continue and exacerbate and grow that fear response. And so the money in itself will create more fear. I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like an awesome exchange. And that's what happens to a lot of people. And again, you can prove this because just go look at people who are in the lottery and get wealth very quickly and you think that would resolve everything. And oftentimes within a number of years have lost all that money, are in bankruptcy and will say they are less satisfied when, when surveyed, are less satisfied with life while they had the money and after they lost it all than they were before they got it. That's like, it's some insane percentiles, like 90 or 95 percentile, something like that, that that happens to. So again, there's a misalignment there when that happens to somebody because it's like, guess what? Their system of support internally didn't change. Circumstances changed, but now they got to sabotage it, right? Because their system is desperately trying to get back into... Um, a kind of framework that the system uses or a kind of range that's comfortable for that system. And so if the circumstances change very quickly and that range changes very much and the system is like, oh crap, I don't know how to deal with that. It's going to do what it needs to do to get back down to that range that it can deal with. And so the work that we do here is about widening that range. It's about growing tremendously because most people are like, I'm this way, I'm that way, I'm that way. I know who I am. I know how the world works. I've concluded everything about myself, everybody else, about society. And so that's how life is. And we know that that's not how life is because there's a vast range to this universe, multiverse, whatever you want to call it at this point in time, of infinite possibilities. So why is it that so many of us are, are only experiencing this narrow band of emotion and of life and of pain and of this and that? And so what I would offer is we want to grow our capacity. You know, what's the biggest gift you can give yourself? The biggest gift you can give yourself is a capacity to be grounded, feel safe and have well-being no matter what circumstances arises. If you knew that you can sit somewhere in your system where you had this like just stillness, then your concern stops being with what's arising in your life. Because again, you already, you've already attained that thing in your body that everyone is trying to manufacture or buy through the acquisition of things, which you can't get it that way. It doesn't work. Again, that's externally focused it doesn't work so that has no impact in the internal instead of going to the source which is the state of well-being that we can uh we can't acquire we can cultivate 
and 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 literally springs forth within us and then you'll see that how you respond to everything outside of yourself is with a lot less resistance you can accept you actually even know how to use those circumstances to create deeper healing and liberation in your system and as a byproduct of that if it's even important to you wealth or the opportunities for wealth will just seemingly arise much much more I can't give you all the details about this because it would be saying too much, but I could tell you uh, we have a client that I had a call with last weekend three years ago when she first started doing this work with us. She would sit at a coffee table smoking cigarettes and having a drink. Her relationship with her son was in total disarray. And as of last weekend, and completely not by her working harder or doing anything, this woman is about to become a, a multi multi millionaire. Okay? She didn't develop a business. She didn't create a strategic plan. Uh, she didn't do any of those things. Her relationship with her son is amazing. She doesn't smoke. She barely drinks. Um, none of those things were her goals. They were not intentions that we worked on with her. It's just that when a system gets into alignment, everything that's not that falls away. And everything that is that arises in their, in their lives. And she had a circumstance where some land was given to her. I'm not going get, to get into all the particulars here. And then out of the blue, I shit you not, an individual from a, 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 a commercial property group called her and, and basically said, I want to acquire all this land. And over this next week or two, this woman's going to go from being, you know, basically completely homeless and penniless to being worth god i don't even know because i didn't ask her how many multi-millions over again this is life-changing money for her and her family and perhaps uh, many generations down how does that happen for somebody it, it's just realignment now, does that mean that happens to everybody absolutely not some of you guys care a lot less about wealth and money it's just not where you're at your your focus in life is about connection and love and if money showed up that would be great but it's not the ultimate for, for other people, it is like, you know, my my contention is that everything just has its own timing. Some people like really want to know, how do I heal this thing? How do I start receiving more? And, and I've had those questions, too. And I remember a teacher once told me, you know, I had this I have a, a thing about be, being angry and, and agitated and, and not feeling like guilt in my system. I'm like, how does how does this go away? And here's the truth. It's like it that has its own timing. That has a divine, intelligent timing. That thing in your life is your vehicle for learning, for growing, for transforming, for evolving. And that's really what this game is all about. We're all here to evolve. We're all here to grow and transform and learn how to bring spirit through, manifest in physical reality. What that path looks like for you is what that path looks like for you. That's your individualistic fingerprint and doing any sort of compare and contrast to anybody else's experience is kind of ridiculous and it's why a lot of programs in my eyes fail because they try to give a one size fits all you know type of work to do and it's just not how it works because navigating our system is not a sequence it's not a five-step program it's not a five-step process. There's there's a there's a way that you work with your system as it's emerging and unfolding, and that's really what we teach here. It's like it's something's arising in your system. It is unpredictable. It is spontaneous. Sometimes you're feeling really good, and then suddenly this feelings arise inside you that doesn't feel good at all, and you don't know why. And you scour. You're like, what change? What circumstance change? Who did this? Why did this happen? And that's not what's happening at all. It's just this. It's a spontaneous opportunity in your system that's arising to liberate energy and evolve in that moment and if you start getting in a thick of weeds with it mentally you actually go into it and start reenacting some trauma that doesn't you don't even need to do that you can just help your system metabolize this energy and move the fuck on go right back into being grounded and balanced and well-being and just just like that and if you don't believe me that that's possible again i always want to point back at children and how they respond to things, because any parent knows and anybody who's been around a child knows that it's like one second they're upset, the next second they're like the most excited, over the moon, happy, right? And so how is it that a child does that? And again, we like to think of this distinction like, oh, that's just what children do. It's like, no, that's what a healthy nervous system does. That's an actual healthy response. And I'm not saying every adult needs to be running around the street having a temper tantrum, although 
Honestly, that would be very helpful if we did that. But what we want to recognize is when a system is not in lockdown, it's not closed, and energy can move through it, we call this a fluid system, there is an aspect of ourselves that has energetic hygiene. It just cleans the system, right? Just like the way you metabolize food, you want to be metabolizing your experiences. Said another way, you want to metabolize the energy that's flowing through your body. Trauma is just stuck energy in the body. It means it hits, trauma energy comes in during an experience, it get, it hits a part, and that part stops the energy from moving. It gets, it's, it's literally frozen. It's a frozen part in your system. It gets frozen, and that's where the discomfort comes in, is that you're feeling that resistance in the system. Our process allows you to train yourself to become fluid in, in your energy and emotions again. And so something comes in, and of course, Elon and I still get angry. We still get upset. We still get annoyed. That's called being human. If you think you're going to take those aspects of yourself and put them to the side and be like, I'm never going to be upset again. I'm going to be happy forever. Whoever's telling you that is lying to you. And if you're telling that to yourself, you're lying to yourself. That's not how, that's not how reality works. That's not how life works. We learn through contrast. We learn through our challenges. We learn through our emotional state. These are all feedback systems. What we want to learn is how do I not get involved too much when that's happening? How do I stop meddling and just let the intelligence of my body do its work? And again, here's a metaphor for, here's a metaphor for you. When you cut your finger, you don't meddle with the finger. And if you meddle with it, right, like every time a scab comes and you pick the scab or, you know, the roof of your mouth gets burned and you keep tonguing it or whatever it is, right, you keep playing with it. Does your body heal slower or does your body heal faster? It heals slower. So it's the same thing with our experiences. It is our inability to be with what is moving in our body that has caused so much pain for humanity for such a long period of time. And so we, what we want to learn is what's the state of consciousness that we can enter that allows one to not get so involved? Because trust me, your you know, children, when they're having an emotional experience, again, if you've seen that bounce back, you're like, wow, that was amazing. They're just, they were just furious two minutes ago. Now they're laughing and, you know, rolling all over the floor. Guess what? Their mind didn't get involved with what was happening in their body. They experienced the trauma. And if, and a, if a caregiver is attuned to what's happening, they will allow that, that process to unfold. Where a lot of us got confused, and again, this hampers our ability with, with money or, give, or receiving anything, where a lot of us got confused is when mom and dad were like, stop that. Don't do that. And, they're, and, you're, and you're like, why? And the parent's like, because I said so. No explanation. It's just a complete domination type of experience. And the child gets confused and goes, oh, I'm not supposed to have that experience. And they start creating armory or protocols in order to act appropriate to what they're being told is appropriate. And so slowly but surely, this child starts concluding certain things about itself and about life. And, a, and what an adult is, is a child that's concluded way too much. And so the aliveness comes out, you stop having aliveness and you just are having this kind of groggy feeling. Why? Because now you, you are literally stopping energy from moving in your body. It's exhausting. You have to use energy to stop the energy flow. And so a healthy body is where we return the energy flow. Okay. And so there's a few ways that we do this because I said I would give you guys a, a few key tips here. And, and, and some of these will be around money and some of these are just around a, a holistic well-being. Okay. So some of your trauma, and again, you can write this down or you can just track this and, and just check it out in your own system, like how this feels for you. Uh, trauma happens at three different levels for people. Okay. And again, your, your trauma at home, if you're anything like me, was probably watching parents struggle around money, parents argue around money, uh, uh, parents... Um, maybe lose a lot of money on gambling or being irresponsible with investments, um, you know, all whatever the different things that you may have experienced. And some of it wasn't even happening directly in your experience, but there was a perception and an energy at home. And again, your system just templates this. And that idea is very important. Again, a child, again, I want to remind you, is not necessarily learning through language yet at their younger years. They're learning through an energetic exchange. And this is why there's been a lot of unhealthy... Um, you know, unhealthy experiences for many of us because we, our parents were not taught how to attune to us. Like how many of you guys had really misattuned parents? Okay, my parents were physically present, but there wasn't a lot of talk about emotions in my house. We, we dealt with everything very logically, very mechanically. Like here's what we're going to do about that. 
And so there wasn't a lot of room to feel in our household, to have this expression in our, in our, in our house. Everything was kind of like shut down, right? That's not okay. And so that's what you learned. And again, this is why this armoring happens. And this is why you start feeling unwell because you're literally moving away from your true nature. Your true nature is this sensitive, energetic being who can also bring in, you know, the mental state. But they're supposed to play together. It's not supposed to be just mental state, mental state, and mental state all the time. But that's how it is for most people. And that's how it is for our world. We live in right now in a world that was created by the mind. How many of you guys would agree there's not a lot of heart in this world? When you look at leadership of this world, you know, most people who come to power are, you know, to put it in science's terminology or at some level seem sociopathic, very disconnected from their emotions, take advantage of people often and are self-serving. And I want you to offer and I want to offer like we can get angry at those people or we can see the trauma that as a society we have created by misattuning to children. And so for whatever reason, just like when you have actors, right, who usually the underlying psychology there is like a, a need to be seen, like that's the, the need that's trying to be met. At the level of politics and leadership, there's also a need that's trying to be met. And those and, and that's how much those systems were not met to the level that in order to be seen, they have to go to that grand scale or to feel anything, they have to go to that grand scale or, you know, try to take power or whatever it might be, right? But it's like, if you look at it underneath, where you can find compassion for is the same hurt little boy and little girl as you trying to find safety, trying to find well-being, trying to find connection, trying to find any sort of resource that's going to make that system calm the fuck down. And so again, a lot of people in power end up in those positions just trying to get their needs met. But that's just at our at, at society, the career that those people need to get to in order to try to get that need met. That's how intense it is for them. Okay? And so our traumas happen like this. There's a like self to self, like what you do internally in your internal perceptions, right? Then there is the self to other, like what happens between you and another, usually in like some kind of relationship, a friendship, romantic relationship. And then there is a self to group, right? What happens to you in terms of groups. And so that's why a lot of people have like the trauma of like standing up in front of the class or raising their hand and saying something and then everyone laughs or like trying to read a book report and that doesn't go well. And again, like there's this moment of like, uh oh, something's not okay here. Disconnection, internal shame, blame arises internally, a protector comes, or something has to kind of like, you know, figure it out. And so would you think that if, if you can track that, this like self to self, self to other, group, self to group, and then vice versa, group to self, other to self, and self to self, that if trauma is happening at those levels, then we got to have a practice that gives us healthy feedback at every level, self to self, self to other, self to group. And what that specifically means is that energetic signaling that I've been talking about here for, for a good 50 minutes now, your system needs to get those signals that it's been looking for. Again, track your own system and look that pretty much everything that you're doing in life, whether it's money or elsewhere, is you trying to get your needs met. Tell me I'm wrong. And you've gone about that in a very specific way your entire life. And maybe, just maybe, there's a different strategy here that most humanity is not taking advantage of, which is we actually need, literally need, connection from another in a healthy way that perhaps we didn't receive from our caregivers. And maybe you will never get that from your parents. You, you will probably never get that from your parents. Why? Because most of them lack the attunement. What was done to you, generally speaking, was done worse to them. Meaning if, if they abused you, if they were drinking, generally speaking, the mother or father somewhere along the lines was heavily abusive and drank. And so that lineage carries itself down. And I do believe that we are now in a time, we've gone to a place in our consciousness and our in our evolution that you can make a choice right here today, right now, doing this kind of work, you can, you can end the lineage trauma that's in your family. I absolutely believe that. We see it all the time now. Okay, it's a very, very special time to be alive. And so if you understand that, you understand that you cannot heal by yourself. And trust me, if I thought there was a way that you could just sit at home and meditate all day long and heal yourself, I would tell you that you could do that. It works very, very well to do that in some respects. And I'm here to offer that the things that you really are trying to get your needs met, you actually cannot 
meet them by yourself because again the child needed to get that from the caregiver the caregiver didn't do that and so our system energetically needs to be met and receive this from others if you do this if you do this if you do these kind of practices and again all our programs are set up this way that's why like we literally looked at we're like okay here's what a human being needs to feel healthy safe well to be able to uh, have more performance in their personal and professional lives. like that. That's why we designed all our programs this way. And I want to let you know, if you're raising your hand to be contacted, by the way, again, if you want to if you want to get contact, let me just put it on the thing here as we, you know, head towards wrapping up today. Let me see. Yeah, here you go. So you can either, here's how you have a conversation with our team. Here's how you find about our programs or about our work, about anything else that we do. And I want to let you know, if you jump on a call, we don't let our team sell anything on this first call. Why? Because we actually want you to be in an exploratory place. We don't want you to feel pressure to have to say yes to anything at all. So these conversations are twofold. It's, hey, you can ask any questions. You can get information about our courses. And also, we need to make sure that you know, you're know you're a good fit at this time in our programs as well. We want to fit. We want to only work with people who feel really, really good for us. Because the people who also join our programs, generally speaking, end up being part of this community and this culture for a very, very long period of time. And it's very important for us that, that this community and this culture has a very high level of integrity because of the sensitive nature of what happens here. When somebody's going through something very difficult, they're opening up their system to support. Support needs to show up when that's happening. If someone's opening up the support and the first response they get is no support, that's, that's, that's traumatic for that person. It, absolutely traumatic. And so again, these conversations are about you kind of like navigating because we don't talk about our programs here on these live calls. That's something you can do with our team. That's where we have them for you. Again, you just put contact me in the contact in the comment box below, or you can just book yourself in. You go over to uh, callsatori.com and uh, it'll take you right over to the calendar. Okay. So again, so you want to think about how am I going to retemplate my nervous system, my sympathetic system, my limbic system so that it no longer responds from that fear place. And then what you wanna understand is, is that most people, if not all people, when we take action in our lives, what determines the outcome, okay? So again, I'll say this again, what the action that we take in our lives, what determines the outcome, is not whether you did it right or wrong, it's actually the quality of the energy that you were in when you took that action. I'll say that again, what determines the quality of the outcome is the quality of the energy you were in when you took the action. And so if the quality of the energy that you were in when you took that action is fear or scarcity or worry or anger or hostility or survival, whatever gets created next is going to create more of that energy. So again, if you're in, you know, in scarcity, that action will end up generally creating more scarcity for you. That's how manifestation works. It's not about that you can't manifest, we're all manifesting. The, what you want to ask yourself is why am I manifesting what I'm manifesting? And, and I would say the answer to that, or at least a way of looking at it, is the quality of your energy. And so what we want to focus on is how do I increase the quality of that energy? How do I change it so that if I'm in worry and fear, I can let that energy metabolize in my system. I come back to a grounded state, stability, safety in my system. And I'm actually generating my actions in life and responding to life from that settled, grounded energy. Do you guys think, again, something for you to ponder, if you are feeling well and safe and grounded in your system as a regular way of being, would you be taking different actions in your life? Would you be making different decisions? Would you show up differently in your relationships? Would your feelings about money and it coming in and out be different? Okay. Okay. And we're a little bit short on time here. I had a little bit like more, uh, you know, practical things that we do. But here's the truth. Practicality is one thing that will still won't change your life. I can give you all the systems. Oh, here's the things that we focus on. Here's a little thing that we do here. Here's da, 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 da. But those things work well. They work well in our lives because we do the deep inner work. Yeah. So just look at just look at people sharing here like absolutely. Right. We intuitively know this, but we don't focus on this. We focus on, I'm afraid, let me change my circumstances. Instead of, I'm afraid, now let me get curious about my fear. Let me learn how to look at my fear, not in a way that re-traumatizes me, 
or reenacts this fear, but I can actually learn how to get the support I need right now and the resource I need so that the fear can move out of my system. Then just like a child, the fear moves and what you're left with is that feeling of stability again. <sighs> and that's what we call emotional or energetic resiliency or an ener energetic fluidity or energetic hygiene. Like all of these are kind of interchangeable. And so you don't walk around with carrying all this stuff in your system, manifesting a life that you don't want that's reflecting the fear that you're living inside of. And so if you want to increase your personal performance, if you want to increase your professional performance, if you want to increase your ability to receive and open up to more wealth, your system actually has to, has to settle down. And then as a byproduct of doing this work, opens suddenly you're going to be like holy shit opportunity is everywhere people want to support me life wants to support me and if that's your fundamental belief all the time again could you see that as you sit in that energy this organic hologram that we call reality is going to start reflecting that deep well of well-being within you then life becomes an expression of well-being instead of something that you have to work very hard at in order to make well-being. And that's the shift here from doing just straight mindset work to actually understanding this underpinnings of energy work. So again, if you're somebody who's like, I want to I want to know the practices. I want to understand what is it that somebody like me or our students are doing on a daily basis in order to get these needs met in our nervous system so that the sympathetic system can downregulate itself, metabolize this energy, our limbic response can change, our threat responses can change. And again, you're all saying this, you know, from my, my mouth to your ears, but probably from your own human experiences, if you're settled down, feeling aligned and safe and in well-being as just your natural state, which is, by the way, your natural state, would you be making different choices? Do you believe that reality would show up differently for you? And I can tell you again, it absolutely would from my experience. And it's not something that you have to work hard at. It's certainly something you have to commit yourself to. But this is not like going to the gym where you're like sweating. We're talking about a few minutes of work here a day. Maybe, maybe five to ten minutes a day. And you can completely reorient to this. Now, is this going to happen overnight? Absolutely. Let me, let me just give you a few things here. This doesn't happen overnight. But however, in a few months, you're going to see huge, huge differences, right? It's like if you've never been to the gym and I take you to the gym consistently for the next 30 days, you're going to see some gains. You're going to get leaner. You're going to see some muscle growing very rapidly. Same thing here. Okay. The other part is there's no plateau here. This is not something that you can ever understand enough of. This is, you know, with mindset work, we see people understand it makes their life better. And then it's kind of like diminishing returns with this work. It's ascending returns all the time. I've been doing this work for almost seven years. It literally gets better with age. It's like a fine wine. Okay. Never, ne never gets, it never gets boring. It's always engaging and interesting. Okay. And the last part is guys, if you're going to, if you're going to say yes to doing our programs, one of the things that you have to know is our programs are not here to, to, to cure anything. They're not going to change your circumstances overnight. That's, that's ridiculous to put any body's responsibility, including mine or Elon's or our programs or any of our clients or students that support people that it's their responsibility. Your life is showing up the way that your life is showing up. That's the reality. Okay, the source of that and why that's happening lives within you. And that has its own divine intelligence and timing. There's a reason that that's happening right now. And, and again, I, I can, I'm only telling you this from a place of having worked with and coached and done healing work with tens of thousands of people and my own personal work. So this is anecdotal evidence, not the ultimate evidence, but anecdotal at best, right? And so if you come to do our work and you get triggered and you take that as a sign of the work not working, that is the sign of the work working. The work is designed to help you see how you show up in life and how you respond to things in a new way. However, in order for that to happen, you need those things need to come up. But the work here is that's different is you're not alone this time. You're gonna be, you're gonna have the support that you're that you've been looking for your entire life. Your system is gonna get its needs met. And if you're willing to be a courageous person who can sit with those responses and actually allow for that uh, metabolic experience to happen, you will never have to deal with that thing again in the same way for the rest of your life. This is not, this is not managing. This is not coping mechanisms that I'm talking about. This is not trying to handle it better. This is not like, oh my God, it's still happening. This is like, it, it will just stop happening. Again, it won't happen overnight, 
but it will happen and you'll be you'll find yourself in situations where something happens that you're normally extremely triggered by whether it's a conversation or a circumstance in your life and you'll be and nothing will happen you will be calm as a hindu cow and you will literally go up to your brain you go we're not going to do anything about this your brain goes nope nothing needs to be done and that's when you're going to have a moment of awe and go holy shit this stuff works and so you want to get yourself to that point because the moment you get that you will have all the anecdotal evidence you ever need and at that point probably all the training that you will ever need to know exactly how to support your own system get resourced and get the type of needs met that the system needs and when you start experiencing your own true nature and the well-being that is a birthright to every man, woman, and child on this planet, we can truly transform the experience of being alive. The truly experience, the truly transform the experience of what a country means, what a nation means, what a citizen means. Like this work has to be done from within. There is no law that's coming that's going to give us this prize. Because you can change laws, but you can't change the hearts and minds of people with laws. That has to be internal work. So, you know, thank you for being a person who's courageous enough to listen to this conversation, for even being interested in it at any level, for participating with your awareness and attention. That's the number one asset you can give anybody. I value that tremendously. So thank you for listening today. I hope it sparked curiosity for you. And I want you to know that what we're sharing on these Tuesdays, these Tuesday lives while powerful, are just a smidge of the power of this work. If you really want to come find out, come find out for yourself because nothing else can give you that experience like personal experience. And that's what these calls are about. So again, if you're interested, get on a call with the team, have a conversation, see if there's alignment there. And then we can uh, talk to you guys about what next steps would be for participating and joining in programs. We love you all so, so very much. I think Elon's back next week. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about anything we talked about comment box or feel free to reach out to support and uh, we will do the best we can to support you with that okay love you all happy tuesday enjoy yourself bye everybody